because of our emphasis on more of the, the rigor and the theoretical principles, we like to think that the shelf life of a degree with, from us is a little bit longer. Hi, my name is Karina McCoska from Academic Influence, and I am here with James Spall, and we are with another online program. Um, he is from Johns Hopkins University, and so starting off, with, we just want to hear how your program got started and um, kind of what was the original idea for it. Okay, so uh, thank you for the uh, interview uh, invitation here. Um, so the data science program started about five or six years ago, and it was in, in, in largely in response to demand in the marketplace. Uh, so Johns Hopkins University has a very large part-time division called Engineering for Professionals, which serves largely people who are working professionals um, and offering classes that can either an online modality or in the evenings or late afternoons that are convenient for people who are working. We had an applied math program already well established that had been around for several decades. And it, that applied math program had uh, quite a few courses related to, to data analysis and statistical analysis and so on. However, the needs of the marketplace were suggesting something stronger related to data science, which is a little bit, people mix up statistics and data science very frequently. They are slightly different, have different emphasis, and the fields themselves are somewhat um, overlapping but somewhat different. So we, we need to establish the data science program because we felt the market was driving us that way. So what we did was we sat down with you know, a tiger team, so to speak, and organized this program in a way that tried to distinguish what we were offering from what was being offered in the general market. And in particular, what we wanted to do was to have a program that was much more rigorous and more theoretically focused than a lot of the other data science programs that were in existence, and to tell you the truth, are still still are in existence. So the, the Hopkins program is more focused on you know fundamental, the fundamentals, I guess, of the field. Um, and so we we merged aspects of of statistical analysis with a lot of computer science and data handling issues, and put together a program that has been refined over the years. You know, we've tweaked it here and there, but the basic program. The fundamentals of the program are essentially the same as they were when we established the program uh, in 2016. So that's... Wow, that's amazing. And it kind of sounds like your program has followed the general trends of, uh, of a lot of programs, not just online programs, but a lot of data science started out kind of as an applied math program and then grew into a field of its own. And so um, just looking forward, how do you think that will continue to change? I mean, data science, we, we just talked to somebody who was doing a cybersecurity one. And similarly, these programs are have grown exponentially in the last couple of years and they will likely continue to grow. So what do you see for the future of your program? Well, we see a sort of, I guess, I mean, my, my, my cliched answer would be just a natural evolution. Okay, there's nothing really profound to answer <laughs> that way. Um, the field itself is evolving as, as computational issues change and, you know, things like computer visualization and data handling issues change. Um, we are going to maintain our focus on the fundamentals. Again, as I say, we, we, this is something we, we, we very, the leadership very strongly believes in our program as a way to set it aside from, or set it apart, I should say, from many other programs that are in existence. Uh, as you know, data science is a field that is, you know, really, I would almost say flooded with programs, sort of, of different types. Um, right. But we want to maintain more of an academic flavor to our program. Um, so in terms of how it evolves over the next few years, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll continue to tweak the course offerings, perhaps add some more course offerings. We are continuing our very strong online presence. It's, it's a strongly online program now, although you can pick up a few of the courses in a face-to-face -face modality, but the vast majority are available online. We'll continue with that trend. Um, Hopkins, the university that is, has several data science programs. The School of Public Health offers one. The main campus during the so-called day program offers one. We offer one, which is more for working professionals. That will continue. Um, and so I don't see any major change over the next, you know, looking, up, looking out, say, five years or so. Beyond five years, my vision is very, very fuzzy. So I don't want to <laughs> stay too far out, uh, especially in a field that, like, 
you know, like data science is fairly rapidly evolving. Right. Yeah. And I, I kind of want to go off of what you said with data science being crowded with a lot of other fields. I mean, data science itself evolved from another field, which we've already talked about. And it kind of seems like it's being incorporated into every other field. So this is kind of uh, not just for an online degree, but data science in general. Do you think do you think it'll start to bud off sort of um, new fields within it? Like, for instance, biology with data science applied, do you think that will ever become just a, a standalone field with another program? Or um, how do you see that kind of evolving? Uh, again, I, my vision, I don't want to make any claims that are uh, way outside of my area of expertise. Right. Okay? So um, I, I, there certainly are, even today, there are many, many tentacles out into various applied areas. I mean, that's the role of data science is fundamentally in an applied right. area, although I said our program tends to focus more on the academic and theoretical principles of it. Um, but the actual ultimate usage of it is in the real world. And the real world obviously involves things like, you know, medicine, cyber, et cetera, et cetera, right. et cetera. Uh, So there are already, you know, vast amounts of connections with, with real world problems, whether those spawn off specific academic programs that are very, very narrowly focused. I'm sure there, there, there and I think I know there are many already, and there will continue to be more, and the need will grow because, you know, for example, within the realm of genetics and something, you know, there's just a, a, a tremendous demand for proper data handling and proper data inference type, is, you know, issues that, that go with a field like that. Um, so, Fundamentally, though, statistics remains at its core. I mean, we, we have set up a program where the statistical methodology and the basic underlying you know, equations and formulas and such that are related to basic statistics remain there. Um, so data science, you, know, you have a lot of the data handling issues. You have, to, you have to be concerned about the pre-processing type issues. You have the sort of the statistical part that sits at the middle where you take all the data, you merge it with methodology and formulas. And then out of that comes other data, post-process data, I guess you might say, or process data um, that have to be you know, interpreted and such. And, and, and again, that's where, again, data science as well is, again, further statistical methodology can come up as well. And that, as far as I can see, will remain at its core. Um, you know, I'm not sure I'm fully answering your question. But that's what no, no, that was great. Yeah, I mean, of course, nobody can really predict what's going to happen. And I'm sure nobody would have expected data science to be at the height it is 10 years ago, um, the height it is today. Um, and so kind of switching gears a little bit, um, let's talk specifically about your program. I know we touched on this and how you guys really focused on um, the academic rigor. And so just kind of tell us what do you think is different about your program versus a lot of the ones that are offered? And also, what do you think is different about the kind of students that would really thrive in your program compared to others? Okay, so really, you know, again, our, our program was designed and continues to be one that is more focused on the fundamental academic principles. And so as part of that, um, we do have a higher level of prerequisites for coming into the program. So we do expect more of our students coming in, say, in the world, you know, in, in their terms of their background, both on the computational science side as well as on the mathematics side. Uh, so to get very specific, we require all of our students to come in with at least multivariate calculus which is typically the third semester of calculus for people. Um, and then there are other prerequisites as well. Um, and uh, so in terms of that, that's, that's going to change. I mean, that's not going to change. That's, that's, that's going to main. That's going to be solid as, as far as we go forward. Um, and, you know, I, I, in terms of how it compares to other programs, a lot of the other programs are more focused, I would say, on the user end, maybe how you actually you know, out in the field actually use software. You know, there are many, many software tools that are available for doing aspects of data science. So some of the programs are more focused on the use of those software tools, um, which can, of course can go in and out of fashion as, as time evolves. Um, we are not so focused on that, although certainly students coming to the program and getting through the program will do software-based experiments and in in, in things possibly even including a capstone project. So that's going to stay the same. Um, but because of our emphasis on more of the, the rigor and the theoretical principles, we like to think that the shelf life of a degree with 
from us is a little bit longer than it would be for a lot of other programs because software comes and goes, as we all know. Uh, right. What's in fashion goes. Good. But the basic mathematical foundations and such, and, and even uh, computational algorithmic fundamentals, whether they're from the math side or whether from the computational or computer science side, those stay longer. They, those have a longer shelf life. And we're going to hew to that as part of our founding principles and part of our guiding principles going forward. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's a really great point that a lot of people don't consider is if if you're going to get a data science degree right now, the technologies you're using are might be completely different in 10 years, but you're still going to be in the workforce. So having that foundation is really key. And so apart from just the prereqs that a student comes in with, who do you think is really the target for this online degree? Is it people straight out of college who are just looking to further their education? Or is it somebody who's been in the workforce for 10 years and now they're coming in, they want to apply data science to whatever their profession or they um, want to go into a degree in data science? Well, we draw from sort of all of the above, I guess I would say. Um, but okay. mainly we draw from people who have been working for a little while. So our, let's say our core demographic are, are people who have been out in the workforce for several years. And I, I would define several here quite broadly, uh, ranging from maybe two or three up to 20, even even beyond that. Um, some of them are going, are, are maybe making a transition in their career. They wanna change the path a little bit. Some might be just building on what they've been doing all along. So our core demographic are people who are generally working professionals um, who want to build their academic skills in, the, in this world of data science. Um, and again, we think that that's going to stay, that's what we see going forward in terms of our, our demographic. It's our demographic now, and I expect that's going to be our demographic going forward. Now again, so that contrasts us with maybe the uh, so-called day program at the campus, because Johns Hopkins, as I mentioned, one of the other data science programs they have is 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 ho hosted at the what's called the Homewood campus, which is sort of the the main academic campus of the university up in up in Baltimore, and uh, they have a very good data science program as well, attracting tending to attract more students on the traditional academic path of coming out with a bachelor's degree and going directly into a, a graduate degree program. So that's a master's program as well for the most part. And it, it draws people that's, I guess you might say a little on the younger, usually a little younger and usually people are fresh out of school. Uh, now I should say, we do get some people like that as well. I mean, it's not, as I said, we draw from all of the above when I started answering your question, but a main right. demographic is people who have been working for several years. Well, wow. well, that is just fantastic because, I mean, we have really seen um, throughout the people we've talked to from online degrees how fantastic these programs are because also for a lot of people, especially in data science, data science really wasn't even a field you could go into when some of these people were going to school. So, I mean, given the people fresh out of school, obviously a lot of universities have incorporated a data science field, but if you've been in the workforce for 20 years and you really want to go get a data science degree, that wasn't always an option when you were, um, when you first started working. So I just think it is fantastic to have online programs like these um, to really make it accessible for more people. And so just finishing out, is there anything that you would like to say to people who are maybe considering um, going to get an online degree specifically in data science or any encouragement you would like to give them? Well, my, I guess my encouragement would be to go for it. I guess. But, <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, you know, you 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 obviously want to get into a program that is right for you, and, and it's just and, and, and data science in particular, and you know, and I would say this applies to many other programs as well. I mean, you the needs are are widely varied, and and, and um, you know whether you want a program that is more directly and, and short term applied is one thing. Whether you want more the one that focuses more on academic principles and rigor is another thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I say, you know, in most cases, sooner is better than later. If you have an opportunity, if you can, have, you know, if you're, if you're a working professional, have an opportunity to go for it through some, you know, a program, maybe your employer is sponsoring where they might maybe subsidize some of your tuition costs or whatever, take advantage of that. Um, I should mention, of course, that you can get courses through, you know, organizations like Coursera and such that are actually, you know, pretty good. I mean, they're, they're well done. They're well, you know, they're very professionally created and curated and such. 
Uh, they're nice programs, that sometimes not in credit programs, and they can be appropriate as well. If you wanna learn some particular software products and be ready to put that into immediate direct use, those are good programs. But again, a program that such as ours is a little bit, has a little longer shelf life, um, and if you're willing to make the investment in terms of studying hard uh, and coming in with the right prereqs, uh, I would encourage you to take, give us a look um, and we'll be happy to accommodate you. By the way, I would also say one other thing too in terms of the prereqs that we have. As I said earlier, they're, you know, they're a little higher than maybe many other programs have. If you think, you're pro if you, think you do not have the prereqs to succeed, we will take a good look at your academic background. And uh, if there's something missing, we, we can generally provide some of that background material within Johns Hopkins to build that up, to sort of cover that missing, that missing link, basically, um, to allow you to succeed in our program. So if you're missing, for example, a particular, uh, you know, a, a calculus course or something like that, we, we can provide that for you. So if, if we think you're otherwise strong academically. So I guess in a nutshell, that's what I would say going forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. So don't be scared off by the prereqs because you guys are there to help out. And if, if you think that this is something you want to do, just go for it. And I, I think that is great advice to people out there who are maybe on, on the edge of going or considering it. So thank you so much for talking with me today. It was really interesting hearing about your program and yeah, it's just, um, it's, it's a new world that we're moving into of online learning. And I think schools like yours have really done a great job um, incorporating these into their curriculum. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for asking the very insightful questions. Enjoy it a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. I'm going to stop recording.